The SEC has just filed a lawsuit against Coinbase, and we are going to delve into all the details. We're going deep. It's a 175 page document, and we're going to go just as deep as we went yesterday on the Binance lawsuit, which is to say we're just going to look at Twitter. We're going to see what Twitter had to say about it. All right, check it out. Okay, so this Adam guy seems to actually have intelligible breakdowns, and then we'll go through some awesome memes, which is probably the better part of this. But first of all, let's jump into this breakdown of the SEC complaint. Advocates say that since 2019, it's been an unregistered securities broker, which is an odd year to pick, not only because nine is an odd number, but like what, what happened? They've been operating since 2014, I think. So like something changed in 2019. This is a very, very weird complaint. Also, they say this has been happening since at least 2019, uh, but the date of the Coinbase IPO was in 2021. So this meme just about sums it up. All right, back to the real breakdown. Okay, so one of the new things they made is a claim here that Coinbase wallet is actually a broker because it can use DeFi. This is something, as Adam would say, insane and new. That would indicate that any Anything that can access DeFi is acting as a broker. Oh my me. This is a very strong shot at the entire decentralized world. This is something we have to keep our eyes on. And it's not something I think has a high probability of actually reaching fruition, but it shows that the SEC is seriously taking its shot at pushing the limits of securities regulations to their absolute maxima. They also claim that Coinbase made a calculated decision to ignore the law. Let's see how they can show that. Okay, so the staking program, which started in 2019, seems to be the linchpin of their case. The SEC is basing their entire case, trying to smuggle the weaker cases of assets in with this. That's why they are starting in 2019. Okay, so now we have our magic numbers, how we got 2019. The staking case is admittedly tougher. The current model of staking, which is a direct pass through rewards with variable fees is probably okay, although novel and complex. The prior one could have been more gray area, which if it is the case is a fine and dropping the offering. I think one of the things that is important here is understanding that this lawsuit was something that the entire crypto industry had been expecting. So to see it come to fruition like this and potentially see that it's really not that bad in its worst case, I think it's a really big deal. We'll get more into this. But this particular tweet from Jake hit home. I sense two reactions from the SEC case against Binance and Coinbase. One, outrage at the SEC's underhanded tactics and open hostility and flagrant disregard for its own mission. Two, relief that the SEC finally took its shot and it's really not that bad. Life and business simply go on. All right, back to the nerd stuff. Gensler once again relying on his own definition of the Howey test, which no court has upheld, specifically saying that it's flexible rather than a static principle. Again, we just see that effectively the way that the current Howey test and securities regulations are written, anything under the sun can be seen as a security. This coffee cup is a security. This t-shirt's a security. Who knows? Maybe you're a security. Maybe, maybe you need to be regulated. Everything is a security. Welcome to 2020. Uh... Okay, this is where it gets actually crazy because he says orange groves have been vehicles for other investment contracts. That's just not true. The contract to acquire rights for future profits of the orange grove was the security that never turned the orange groves themselves into securities. To be clear, this all stems from when orange groves themselves were the talk of the town. This is what the Howey test was based on in the 1930s when they were selling orange groves and were somehow using this logic to decide which cryptocurrencies should be regulated by Gary Gensler versus which ones should have common sense regulation be because it's a new industry. I don't know, am I slowly slipping into insanity? I think so. So they lean on these historical ICOs as the reasons for them being securities. Obviously, we all knew this was coming. Raising funds with absolutely no sense of if you're raising from Americans, and most likely we know Americans were a part of these ICOs, that is one of the biggest no-nos. The real question is how much does this hold up once these networks mature, become decentralized due to the SEC's own logic? And then of course, we also know that secondary sales of cryptocurrencies have come completely collapsed and do not uphold in court as security. So we know that secondary market stuff is not securities. Again, the wallet case is alarming here. This is a very alarming case. I don't see it working out, but this is trying to slip and slide literally all of DeFi into being a securities regulated industry. I just don't see it happening. It's way too far afield and no judge worth his salt. Specifically, the Supreme Court is going to uphold this nonsense, not in my opinion.
and I am a professional YouTuber. Okay, TLDR, mostly focused on a few staking assets. Asset components will be thrown out by any reasonable judge. Claims non-custodial wallet is a broker dealer, will result in fines and closing staking at most. Again, slap on the wrist, business as usual. This is the way we do business. Meanwhile, Coinbase stock and the crypto markets are plummeting. Come on, get your heads wrapped around when you see a buyable dip, my people. This is where we buy the dip. That's when I said we were gonna start averaging little by little, saying we're waiting for these big dips, these black swan moments. We could have more black swans in the future. You don't go all in. But in my opinion, my strategy is to slurp up this dip little by little as we see blood on the highway to catch lower and lower prices. That's just me. You do you. Now let's jump into the memes. Coinbase responded, the SEC's reliance on enforcement only approach in the absence of clear rules for the digital asset industry is hurting America's economic competitiveness and companies like Coinbase that have demonstrated commitment to compliance. The solution is legislation that allows for fair rules of the road to be developed transparently and apply equally, not litigation. In the meantime, we'll continue to operate our business as usual. Dunk on them, baby. As Udi explains here, Coinbase onboarded millions to Bitcoin, myself included. Minted many multimillionaires by giving them trusted access to Bitcoin early on, helped onboard institutions such as MicroStrategy, and seeing laser-eyed maxis cheer on the SEC as it tries to take Coinbase down makes me sick to my stomach. Likewise, Udi, likewise. No one should be cheering this on. It's pathetic. The SEC sues Coinbase, says it operated an unregistered securities broker since 2019. The U.S. government sells billions of dollars of Bitcoin via Coinbase since 2019. One of the most enjoyable parts about today was seeing Jim Cramer absolutely snap. Now, Jim Cramer has made a career out of effectively pushing people into the worst investment opportunities and calling the market so wrong that there's now literally an ETF called Inverse Cramer, where you can literally buy into whatever is the opposite of what this guy says. Now, he has a special vendetta against crypto people because we're the ones who make fun of him the most. We're just the ones who take to the internet to call the shots the way it is. We're way more brutal than FinTwit, aka financial Twitter, aka the normies. Check this out. Today, those who toil daily to prop up crypto coins will have to work in overdrive. The Binance brief by the SEC is so devastating that the defenders of this company will have to do some serious soul searching and expend real capital to maintain what looks to be a sham. Damn you crypto bros. Oh, I'm gonna get you crypto bros. Ah, oh, you guys are a, sh a sham. You crypto sham. Imagine being this salty about anything. Clearly old Jim here is projecting to a certain degree. Now it took me a while because I didn't think that this was a real tweet, but as we can see here, he says clearly, I've had it with Soldano. And this is real. He actually tweeted, I've had it with Soldano as a way to take a shot at Solano. <laughs> and literally Kobe has a dementia support service services link here. I'm legit blown away that this is an actual tweet. I swear I had to check it like six times. Not only Jim Cramer was frustrated with Solano, Solana, sorry, <laughs> because like he said he sold all his crypto a long time ago. Like you're really holding Solana? Rick, you're holding it? That doesn't make any sense. I guess he lied once again. But the main point is he doesn't seem to get the number one rule, which is that crypto moves in cycles. You buy at the lows. You buy in these FUD storms. You slurp up the dip in the worst times and you prepare for the next cycle. And there's no real way to predict exactly when that next cycle is going to pop off. In fact, it's very hard to predict the ultimate bottom because sentiment is so low at the bottoms that it's very hard to sense exactly where that is. I know I didn't call the ultimate bottom. If that that indeed was the bottom at the 15, 16K region. Who knows, maybe we'll get another try at the lows. Maybe we'll just grind sideways. Maybe we'll hit 20K again. Either way, I'm just slurping it up little by little over the coming months, allowing myself ample time to get some cheap coins if we dive back down. And here, the lowest of the low, we see Jim Cramer effectively trying to create a bank run at Binance. This is absolutely insane that you would do that. Now, I totally agree. You should never keep your coins on a centralized exchange. But saying that you need to trample people to get out is like screaming fire in a movie theater. You don't need to scream. You don't need to have graphic references. Anyone who has their coins on a centralized exchange is risking total loss. That's the way it's always been. That is because you don't own your coins. FTX taught us the hard way. In the end, it's something that we've been saying forever, but now it has a ton of teeth. So just make sure that you own your own coins. Still, Jim Cramer's tone here is just pathetic and sad. 
There you have it, the Coinbase lawsuit in a nutshell. SEC suing Coinbase, Bitcoin maxis cheering on the lawsuit. A lot of this stuff won't hold up in court, especially the asset specific claims. It seems that the staker that they're promising some yield from, the staking program that was on Coinbase is the linchpin of their case, which we all know will end with a fine. We actually have seen this play out with Kraken. So again, business as usual, let's not get confused here. As always, it's all just getting a bit tiresome. It's like negotiating with someone who's having such an aggressive first position that you eventually just end up countering and settling somewhere, not even in the middle, but like way, way off to the reasonable side. In the end, this is the way that business is being done here in 2023. And we can only hope that Congress can get their act together and that this motivates them to get common sense legislation passed into the United States where innovators can find a home here. Because this is just some wild, wild stuff. As always, we're going to keep you informed and we're trying to ramp the content here as I feel like the moments of opportunity are fast approaching. We're seeing so much malaise in the markets. We're seeing so many talks about a black swan, a recession, a huge crash. If there is one and we do get a triple digit ETH or a 10K Bitcoin or something like that, you better believe that's a dip that I will be slurping personally. You make your own decisions. That's just my approach. I'm Elio Trades and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.